genes that could make life a little sweeter. But it's a very nice sweetness without any bitterness at all. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. I'm Lucky Severson. Humans have evolved to have a preference for sweet things. We have a sweet tooth because we need sugars to provide energy for the cells in our bodies. But modern man may be getting too much of a good thing. The Western world is facing an epidemic of obesity and a rapid increase in cases of diabetes. But what if there were a natural substance low in calories and much sweeter than sugar? Our ability to track down and manipulate genes could mean sweeter times are just around the corner. Here's the scoop. Meet the Brazine plant, otherwise known as Iubli, to the residents of West Africa where the plant grows wild. Iubli produces a fruit that turns out to be pretty unusual. The pulp of the fruit is incredibly sweet, but unlike almost all other naturally sweet plants like sugarcane, what carries Brazine sweet taste is not a carbohydrate. Brazine is a protein. It's a uh, like many other proteins, but in different from other proteins, it's sweet. And it's very sweet. It's about uh, 2,000 times sweeter than sugar. Previously, we thought that protein could not possibly be sweet, which is makes it interesting. That structural oddity wasn't the only thing about Brazine that interested Dr. Helicant. As a taste physiologist, he was also surprised to learn that not every animal species experienced the taste of Brazine the same way. It's only primates that can taste it. And among the primates, it's old world monkeys. And of course, chimpanzees that would be around, but also human, and especially children seem to be very fond of it much sweeter than, than, the, than, than the other than one, yeah. Than, yeah. So the, the color of the, of the fruit is really a good indication of how much there is. It is a very nice sweet compound, uh, which has a taste which is not quite like sugar. It uh, has a slower onset of its taste than sugar has, but it's a very nice sweetness without any bitterness at all. Recognizing Brazine's potential, scientists at the University of Wisconsin in Madison started investigating in earnest. They hoped to recreate Brazine in the lab for use as a possible commercial sweetener and to better understand its unique interaction with human and primate taste receptors. They started by analyzing the protein that gives Brazine its sweet taste. Okay, let's stop here for a second to consult our all-knowing hitchhiker's guide to the genome. A protein is something like meat, right? Meat is made up of proteins, but all proteins aren't meat. I trust you intend to explain this. About proteins. Every plant and animal on our planet is made up of cells, and within the nucleus of these cells are long strings of DNA, which exist in functional sequences we call genes. Each gene carries instructions directing a cell to produce a specific protein. Proteins are fundamental components of all living cells and include many substances such as enzymes, hormones, and antibodies. Proteins are made up of smaller building blocks called amino acids. These amino acids can be linked together in different combinations to form thousands of different proteins. So once Dr. Helicant and his team discovered the amino acid sequence which makes up Brazine's protein, they could look for the genes that controlled the process. We're making use of the technology that has come out of uh, the gene revolution. And this is the technology that enable, enables us, to, first of all, to start with an amino acid sequence and predict the gene that codes for that. To make sure they had the right amino acid sequence and molecular structure for Brazine, Dr. Markley used nuclear magnetic resonance technology. What we do is we, we take the, the protein and we dissolve it in water, and then we put it in a magnetic field, our NMR spectrometer. We irradiate it with uh, radio waves, so it's like turning on a radio transmitter. We turn it on for a short period of time, and then we 
turn it off and we detect the signal that comes back uh, from the protein. Uh, what we're seeing here is a the, the three-dimensional structure of Brazian as it was determined uh, by NMR spectroscopy. And we've color-coded uh, the amino acid residues. The ones that are red are the ones where uh, when we change them, uh, we've been able to make the protein sweeter. And the ones that are blue are ones uh, where we change them uh, and we lose the sweet taste completely. Once the molecular structure was confirmed, they were ready to use this information to synthetically create the gene for Brazine in the laboratory. So we had the sequence of the protein, which was verified by our NMR data, so we, we knew that we had the correct sequence. And having the sequence, we could, uh, using the genetic code, we could synthesize a DNA molecule that would make more Brazian. So instead of having to go to Africa and uh, find this fruit, now we can make the, the protein in the laboratory, and it's, it's exactly the same as the protein that comes from Brazian. We can put this blueprint into different organisms. We could, we could put it into uh, a potato and make a potato sweet, or we could put it into a cranberry and make the cranberry sweeter. Why go to all this trouble just to find another artificial sweetener? Because Brazine isn't actually artificial, even though it is made in the lab. NutraSweet and saccharin, for example, are laboratory creations. With Brazine, the gene may have been engineered in the lab, but the sweet results are as authentic and natural as a protein in a Brazine fruit itself. And so if, if uh, Brazian turns out to be useful commercially, then this could be a way that, that people could satisfy their sweet tooth without uh, actually eating sugar and taking in the calories. All right, we're, we're here to uh, do a taste test of uh, some samples. I don't but know what about the big question? Tasting, How does it taste? I think definitely it was sweeter compared to the rest of the samples. Lasted a little longer, somewhat of a of a gentler taste, um, and um, probably a little more pleasant. There is a little bit of uh, lingering of the sweetness, basically in Brazilian. It's not art artificial, but I think it has a nicer taste than some of the artificial sweeteners that are on the market. Brazine fared pretty well in the human taste test, but what about the toughest critics, the ones who knew and loved Brazine in the wild? Yeah, and I also see they hang to it and cling to the nozzle much more than they do with this water. They pull the... Pull the nozzle out <laughs> for the sweet compound. The rhesus monkeys in the lab clearly preferred the water spiked with brazine to the plain water. The secrets of the sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.